Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the second video in the video series for our organic chemistry to labs. Um, this week we're actually doing a synthesis. Uh, it doesn't require any um, distillation or reflex or any of that stuff. Um, well, technically you don't do a whole lot of synthesis per se, just the synthesis in organic uh, chemistry to labs. But uh, unfortunately our lecture and lab are only 10 minutes apart. We have a test this week and uh, the test is consuming half an hour of our lab time so uh, we have to do something that is we can salvage the time rather than just saying there's no lab so anyways we're doing a uh, synthesis so the chemical that we will be synthesizing today in lab would be citric acid um, citric acid is a preservative um, it's used in a lot of food products uh, your Coke, Pepsi, chips, anything you buy in the store, if you look on the back of the can, anything that's in a, in a can or any kind of preservative, uh, any kind of food that pre uses preservative, you'll definitely see the words citric acid. Um, citric acid, just the name you can uh, understand, it comes from uh, citrus fruits. Um, the fruit we chose to work today is, uh, is lemons. And uh, we'll be extracting citric acid crystals out of the lemons and then uh, we'll probably test the boiling point and uh, and then probably just do a percent yield it's gonna be a pretty straightforward lab I think video 3 would be we'll be back again to more uh, more uh, mechanisms and stuff that we actually learn in class uh, for organic chemistry too but this week is going to be fairly simple just so follow along I'm going to record the video in chunks because uh, that it works for me. So I will put them all as one big tube, but I'm going to record them in video. So if I say bye and I'll come back, that's probably what I meant. Um, it's a pretty straightforward lab. There's hardly any areas you can really mess it up. And um, I'll walk you through the reaction first, and then I'll uh, take you to the station and uh, walk you through the ingredients, what I'll be using. And uh, we will handle concentrated acids. So, gloves and aprons and uh, goggles are a must. I don't think you can work in any chemistry lab without these protective wear. But today we will be using 98% sulfuric acid, which is extremely corrosive and caustic. So, uh, you be well prepared for the lab. And uh, you should be wearing closed shoes and uh, all the basic stuff that you have to wear for a lab and uh, without further delay I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna walk you through the chemical reaction once I walk you through the chemical reaction I'll actually record it I may have to do a voiceover because I can so I'm recording the video myself so um, I'll have to do a voiceover so if there's any voice sync issues just watch the video and the purpose of the video is so you can just pause and play and work the lab yourself at your convenience uh, so you don't have to always uh, call the instructor to get you uh, help while he's assisting somebody and it gives a visual picture of what's really happening than a handout of course I'll provide handouts but the videos will be a lot better anyways that's the that's where I'm gonna end this part here and then I'm gonna take you to the, to the chalkboard where we're gonna see the actual reaction that's happening all right all right, um, as I said, we'll be synthesizing citric acid today in our lab, and you can see the reaction. Just by that, you can tell this is a fairly simple reaction. You've got your citric acid, which reacts with sodium hydroxide, and you make trisodium citrate, and you also make some water as a byproduct. Now, you see three sodium ions because citric acid is a, uh, it's a carboxylic acid with three carboxylic acid groups. So each OH is potentially uh, susceptible to attack by a sodium, essentially you're turning an acid into its salt. So that's a buffer, that's essentially what it is. And you probably learned this stuff in your Chem 102, 115, whatever your, the course number in your schools is. So we're just taking it one step. You probably just saw the reaction, but you were actually synthesizing citric acid crystals. and. Uh, the video that I will at the end of it it depends on how 
how clean my crystal looks. If it requires, then I'll probably do few crystallization process to get the most cleanest crystal. But if it turns out to be really good, then we're gonna stop with that. But that's the reaction, that's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna stop here and when I'm ready to commence the experiment, I'm gonna just uh, record and I'll try to speak as much on the video, but I'm actually recording myself and I don't wanna lose attention towards the experiment. So if I don't speak, I'll just fill it up with a voiceover, All right? All right, bye-bye. Okay, uh, welcome back. The first pro step in the um, citric acid synthesis, once you have all the reagents ready. So let me quickly walk you through the reagents that you need for this, um, for this lab. Uh, the exact description of the quantity of chemicals used to make the stock solutions can be found in the description. But since I'm also, will be handing out a handout, it will be specifically uh, telling the students how much chemicals have gone into the stock solutions. So here we have sodium hydroxide. And uh, to make this stock solution is about 100 milliliters. I put 10 grams of sodium hydroxide pellets and I put 100 milliliters of water and there you have it. So for the first step, you would also need a pH meter. It would look something like this. You may have more, um, if you have a different pH meter like this, you may have a more range, but here I only have, you know, one through three through 11. And um, you'll need this. And uh, you also need a stir plate. And you can see the beaker containing the lemon juice in it. I've taken about 115 grams. The actual procedure called for about 450 grams, but then that's if you wanna make a lot of citric acid. Uh, I wanna cut down the amount of waste that's being used up in the process. And I also don't want students to be using a lot of lemon juice. So for the purpose of our lab, I cut it down three, so about 115 grams is what's in here. And I put a stir bar already in it. And I'm gonna stir, as I stir, um, I'm gonna add sodium hydroxide. Now, if you remember your titration of weak acid versus strong base, which is essentially what we're doing, this is a weak acid, which is citric acid. This is a strong base, which is sodium hydroxide. If you remember, there's, you need three equivalents of hydroxide for one citric acid because citric acid contains three um, protons in it so each proton needs a sodium hydroxide so you would need about um, one to one so what we're trying to do is add sodium hydroxide with constant stirring and periodically check the pH of the solution with our pH paper and we're looking for a green color, a darker green, which is about nine. If you go slightly past nine, I mean, you can't really tell that finite difference between nine and a 10. But if you see a darker green solution, when you test your pH, well, that's when you stop adding sodium hydroxide. Essentially, you're trying to convert, convert the citric acid into the salt of the citric acid. For those of you that are thinking, oh, I've heard this somewhere, Think about it, it's the word that starts with the letter B as in boy, okay? That's what we're trying to do here. And uh, well, don't keep dipping the same paper back and forth again and again, keep shit, ripping it off and you know, I don't need to say all this stuff. But for those of you that need that extra bit of help, well, I'm gonna go ahead and start the stirring here. All right, there we go thought I already had the stirrer in, unfortunately I don't think I did. Now I'm going to add sodium hydroxide, well since we're shooting for a pH of 9, I guess you don't need to check it right away because it will take a little bit, but you want to have a constant stirring, remember your acid base titration, you don't just add and then wait. Um, you have to either manually stir it or using a stir bar if you have one in place. Okay, normally it should take a little bit more sodium hydroxide. So I'm constantly adding a drop every second and give it a stir. You can smell the sodium hydroxide reacting with the citric acid. Now I'm gonna dip the paper in. Obviously I know it's not gonna be dark green because nowhere near green. So we're gonna keep doing, I can. I guess I can use the other end of the paper, so. Okay. 
You can add a little bit, you can be generous. This is the first step in the process where we're trying to convert the citric acid to a trisodium citrate. You'll see nothing happens until we hit about pH 9. That's when you'll start to see something separate out. And we're actually looking for the filtrate. So I'm going to go dip it in. Nothing happens. That means we're still pretty much in the in the in the pH range, so I'm gonna probably I don't know if these papers are any good. I'm gonna turn it off here and come back.